This month, Miguel Cotto wrapped up a career that I believe will land him in the Hall of Fame. And to me, not only was Miguel Cotto one of the best of his generation, his crowd-pleasing style would have made him a fan favorite in any era. When Miguel began his career, he reminded me of a young Roberto Duran, a fearless fighter who overpowers his opponents with relentless aggression. They say don't fall in love with a fighter. How could you not with Miguel Cotto's skills? And Cotto combined that aggression with high-end fundamentals, sound footwork, consistent pressure, and of course, that laser focus left hook to the body. Another vicious body shot. But unlike a lot of other fighters with great amateur backgrounds, he never played it safe. He chose to take risks and was willing to be gotten in order to get some. Down goes Ricardo Torres. And that's why we loved him. Miguel Cotto faced every great challenge placed before him. Judah, Mosley, Margarito, Pacquiao, Mayweather, and Canelo. And while he didn't win them all, he did become the first Puerto Rican man to win title belts in four weight divisions and carried the legacy of that boxing-crazed island for over 16 years with excellence and dignity. He fought with his heart, and even in his losses, we somehow grew to love him more. Because no other fighter carried himself the way Cotto did. In both victory and defeat, he never lost his poise. He stood dignified and humble after closing his career with a loss to Saddam Ali. Because Miguel Cotto has never let himself be defined by outcomes. Instead, he chose to define himself by the way he faced every round in every fight. Miguel Cotto has proven himself a man of character, a timeless champion, and in my eyes, a Hall of Famer in and out of the ring. Now let's talk about the one Koto opponent who didn't earn respect. In an era when the pound-for-pound -pound summit was mostly controlled by Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, Koto never quite made it to the top. Ultimately, he lost competitive fights to both superstars. But in the minds of Koto's most ardent admirers, there will always be an asterisk. What would he have become? if Antonio Margarito's loaded hand wraps had been discovered and prevented half a year prior to the night Shane Mosley's trainer spotted them in Los Angeles. How much of Cotto's brilliance was beaten out of him in the late rounds of his Las Vegas showdown with Margarito six months prior to that, when the vast majority of ringside media later drew the conclusion Margarito was bashing his face and body with plaster of Paris bricks concealed in his gloves. Rewind the BTR sometime to the first five rounds of that confrontation and ask yourself, is it possible with that visible combination of speed and power and precision that Miguel Cotto had momentarily reached that Pacquiao Mayweather level? We'll never know. He'll never know. After Cotto stopped Margarito in their rematch in 2011, he summed up their relationship in five words. He means nothing to me.